This is an extract from the Leader Coronavirus Daily podcast by The Evening Standard and hosted by me, David Marsland. To hear the whole thing, search for it on your podcast provider. Hi, I'm Bonnie Christian. Boris Johnson speaks exclusively to The Evening Standard's new editor, Emily Sheffield. When I repeatedly asked him, look, if things look pretty nasty in the autumn, are you going to offer more help? He, he was very clear there would be further packages. So you sense that he's going to borrow more. But yes, furloughing is not going to go beyond October. The Prime Minister has a blunt warning for the country. The furlough scheme cannot continue forever. It'll be a blow for business groups and unions who've been pleading for a third extension. But Boris Johnson says to do so wouldn't be healthy for the economy or for us. Our editorial column says that while the PM's optimism to reopen Britain is admirable, there's a hole in his plan. We might have to go back into lockdown and it's not clear what will happen if we do. The nation is looking forward to its big night out this Saturday when lockdown ends, and none more so than Boris Johnson. But we suspect that what excites him more than a pint is the hope that he can get back to being a good times prime minister. The Covid crisis has been hard for the nation's optimist in chief. Mr Johnson tells us that the government needs to act with great urgency in rebuilding our prosperity. He promises his government will step it up and do what it takes to achieve this. But he needs to have a plan for what to do if businesses are suddenly forced back into a local lockdown. And there's still no word, months into this crisis, on the specific help for the performing arts and theatres that bring this city to life and now face financial catastrophe. He's right to project confidence about our country and our capital's future. The question now is where's the substance? It's been just days since the Prime Minister was in the Midlands, launching a so-called New Deal to soften the blow from the pandemic to Britain's economy. We're preparing now, slowly, cautiously, to come out of hibernation, and I believe it's absolutely vital for us to set out the way ahead so that everyone can think and plan for the future, short, medium and long term. Now, in an interview with The Evening Standard's new editor, Emily Sheffield, Boris Johnson's signalled even more spending. She joins me now. Emily, what sense do you get about Boris Johnson's attitude towards getting the country back on track? Well, he said two things. He was very clear about furloughing, um, that he thinks that in the long term that's doing damage to people staying at home, but also to the economy. I think... You did get the sense he'd be he'd just come out of PMQs a couple of hours before where Keir Starmer had had a go at him that this new package really announced really amounted to very little, which it's true. There's there's not a huge amount of money in that. The Prime Minister's announcement yesterday was investment equivalent to less than a hundred pounds per person across the United Kingdom. 0.2% of GDP. Not much of his announcement was new, and it certainly wasn't much of a deal. You got the sense he was quite stung by that. So he was clear that when I repeatedly asked him, look, if things look pretty nasty in the autumn, are you going to offer more help? He he was very clear there would be more further packages. Um, so you sense that he's going to borrow more because at the same time he was saying no tax rises. He was very firm on that. And also he's been very firm on austerity. So I think we're looking at a big, a big period of borrowing. But yes, furloughing is not going to go beyond October. And of course, for London... And in particular, our theatres and some restaurants with uh, restaurants only half empty, probably still come the autumn if we've still got, because without a vaccine, it means that maybe we will still be sitting a metre apart. For theatres, that means that they're saying they can't open if people are um, a a metre apart, is that one would hope that if the furloughing is going to end, this newspaper actually agrees that that is right, uh, we are going to need further aid packages and, and literally aid to save some of our great art establishments in this city. There's been some criticism that the PM is almost blind to the risks 
of another outbreak and therefore a lockdown, and also criticism of his decision to reopen the hospitality industry on a Saturday. Did he address that at all? He did. He's not blind to it, He, uh, but he wants to get things moving. He very much cautioned that can please people not behave recklessly this weekend and and again, as a as a as, as a newspaper and as an editor, I would I would caution that too, because of course people want to go out and drink pints again for the first time. But if everyone takes it too far, drinks too much, you're not going to do your social distancing. And there are spikes, little spikes happening across the city, and we've seen what's happened in Leicester. And I just I hope people do remember as they as they go out and spend their money, which we need, we desperately need that for the economy. That, that, that they realise that if we go back into lockdown, that's going to be desperate for the economy. So they have got to behave responsibly. The piece mentions that there's going to be a big drive to get more women onto his team. What are the plans there? Yeah, to be clear, he didn't mention it. I asked him repeatedly on this about the quad of men that talked to us while he was getting better, actually. So not entirely his own fault, but... And he pushed back on this. And his female aide actually told him incorrectly that half of junior ministers, Tory ministers, are women. That's not true. 76 men, 32 women. And he's right. You know, they have the Labour have yet to have a female prime minister. But the point is there aren't enough women in the cabinet. And during the pandemic, there were only men talking to us, apart from Priti Patel, who was only allowed on three times out of 92 briefings. And another sort of quad of men... Um, was being prepped to to get us out of lockdown, and again, I, I, you know, you didn't hear any women in that in that new quad. Um, so I did repeatedly push him on it and wouldn't let him slither from that. And he did finally uh, pledge that in the next reshuffle that will probably be in autumn, he will move women up into the cabinet, more women, because there are only seven to twenty six. He also mentioned he wanted to erect a statue of Muhammad Ali. What's the backstory there? Well, this is the the Black Lives Matter and the the pulling down of slave traders. Um, And what we asked him was that Sean Bailey, who is the Tory candidate for mayor, has said that we should be putting up more statues to cover to cover a much wider, more diverse section of society and celebrate their great everyone's great um, achievements in this city. I mean, Muhammad Ali, he's American. But what we have asked is that we would like, anyone listening to this, we would like suggestions from um, our readers who they would like, what statues, what more statues they would like in London. And as a newspaper, we will campaign to make sure they are actually erected. Search for the leader coronavirus daily on any podcast provider to hear more from the podcast.